What is up? Crypto Keith here and this is Crypto Living. And today we're going to talk about some of the market caps today, what's leading, what's falling behind. We're also going to talk about some news today, uh, some Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news. So today in the news we have obviously the tether hack that happened yesterday or uh, the day before. Today we're going to talk about what they're doing about that and we're going to look into tether a little bit and some similar hacks and what was done about it. We're going to talk about Tether's new coin, uh, Euro T instead of USDT. We're going to talk about how you can bring up the topic of cryptocurrencies at your holiday dinner table. So when you're having Christmas with your family, how you can bring up the topic. We're also going to uh, talk about BAT, BAT token, so basic attention token and how you can pay your favorite YouTubers with that or how you can as a YouTube creator start getting paid with cryptocurrencies. We're going to talk about a couple other little news stories and that's about it. So stay tuned till the end and hit that bell to get on the Crypto Living Notification Squad. We'll see you on the other side. What's up everybody, Crypto Keys here. So we're gonna start with some bad news, if that's what you wanna call it, with uh, the recent US dollar or USDT hack. So the Tether hack, which is US dollars put on the blockchain. But Tether is controversial enough with the fact that they're printing money. And um, I just noticed after this hack, I went on to my exchange, one of my exchanges here, Bitfinex. So on Bitfinex over here, we have Euro now. So we not only have US dollars, we also have Euro. And so that made me think that Tether, after they got hacked for $30 million, they decided to create their own coin and basically print more money. Um, so they were really fast on that and getting on Bitfinex as uh, as you as Euro. But once I did some digging and reading, I saw that this was done um, re very recently. So probably after the hack on Bitfinex, but that actual Euro token has existed for. The actual Euro token you can see here euro um has existed since um well the first article i saw talking about it was in august we see tether got 30 million dollars stole from them and then we see like i said like i said the first article talking about it was in august and then we have this article here talking about bitfinex launching euro trading and how this was done on Bitfinex, uh, a huge part of the reason it was done was because US dollar wire transfers from banks um, are no longer available. So it's impossible for anybody to put fiat dollars directly into cryptocurrency through Bitfinex or US dollar um, companies. So now they created the Euro dollar for people in the States and obviously in Europe, to uh, to buy into Bitcoin and basically give Bitfinex cash. So this is part of the reason they did this. But they did just create another token and they are printing more money. Um, one of the articles talked about how it's on Euro dollars on... Uh, made with the Omni technology and the Omni platform. So Tether launches Eurocoin, and this was in August 2016, actually. So they seem to have had this Eurocoin around for a long time, but after the hack, they moved it on to Bitfinex to uh, help get more funds into USDT, or into, uh, they want more fiat dollars 
because they just lost 30 million. So they're getting accepting euros now. And they're supposed to have been transferred, wired euros or US dollars before they can make another token. So their tokens are supposed to just represent what they have in their vault in uh, actual cash. But there's a lot of controversy surrounding the fact that they might not. And as well as Bitfinex Exchange, Bitfinex Exchange is now the number one exchange for volume. But they have a lot of shady uh, business going on, like the fact that they bought into US dollar T, USDT, and it could come back to haunt them. Because what they're doing with USDT and basically just printing digital money, they're printing money. Um, it's, it's basically like fraud because they're creating um, money. So they're saying that this could come back and haunt Bitfinex more um, just dealing with USDT. But I think they uh, decompartmentalized the companies. So it's a big uh, mess of who owns what. So Bitfinex and USDT and now Euro are kind of owned by the same people. Some people are that own are, or are in on uh, Bitfinex are also in on USDT. So that's the story there. We see here um, that Ethereum got hacked. It's not recent, but it they got hacked for um, $31 million worth of Ethereum, one of the biggest um, hacks in history. Well, it looks like the same people might have done the USDT hack because it was the same amount of money. So after the Ethereum hack, um, they created forks. There's been about five or six forks now with Ethereum. And this is what USDT or Tether is trying to do too. They, they want everybody to fork uh, USDT so that the people that stole the $30 million cannot spend it. So if we, if we fork the token to a new chain, um, they have tokens that are on, on the old chain. They won't be able to spend them on the new chain. Uh, something along those lines. They're trying to make them unspendable because now that they got them stolen, they, they're holding, um, monies people gave them for USDT and they got um, some of that money stolen. So they didn't get U. I I don't think they got USDT stolen. I think it was uh, US dollars because they couldn't have reserve amounts of USDT unless they had money on hand for it. And if they did have uh, money that they just created and didn't have the cash for it, then it's a good thing they got stolen from because they can print basically power and they can print um, a lot of power by doing that. So someone stole from them. Maybe that's kind of like a Robin Hood type person stealing from the rich. And then hopefully they go and do something good with that money, give it to the poor. If that happens, it's not such a bad thing. So let's move over to this basic attention story. So Brave expands basic attention token platform to YouTube. And this was written by uh, basic attention token on November 15th. YouTube creators can now earn bat for their content. With today's relief of Brave browser for the desktop, audience can use the Brave payment system to reward their favorite YouTube creators. Kind of like Patreon, I guess. With basic attention tokens. YouTube Viewers can either distribute contributions based on the time they spend viewing material or by pinning a set amount for a particular channel. Previously, the bat could only be distributed on a domain by domain basis. The Brave browser provides an ad free YouTube video experience. It also enables a direct monetary relationship between the content creator and their audience. Compensation for YouTube creators no longer needs to be based on vague rules or mercurial algorithms as users can decide who to compensate this new ability will especially benefit youtube creators who have under 10,000 lifetime views as they do not receive ad revenue from youtube previously youtube creators could not be listed as individual publishers in brave payments 
This change allows BAT contributions to flow directly into their wallets. The Brave browser determines the YouTube creator name from a YouTube video, no matter what site embeds it, the, it then displays it in the Brave payments list, enabling the user to donate back on a monthly basis. Once a user enables Brave payments, donations are done automatically and anonymously. In order to verify YouTube creators with our Brave payment system, we use the OAuth standard. Once the creator's email is confirmed by our systems, they are asked to verify their YouTube channel by connecting via, YouTube, via Google. In turn, Google confirms with our publisher site that the creator has authenticated and is authorized owner of that channel without revealing their credentials. After YouTube creator completes this verification process and opens the account with Uphold, which I actually have an account with over here, and I'll show you, they are eligible to start connect, collecting monthly back contributions from their audience. Back contributions are automatically converted to fiat and may then be transferred to the creator's bank account. We look forward to seeing a new category of content creators on YouTube get rewarded via BAT. We plan on extending BAT to additional user-generated content platforms so that more creators can benefit from audience support and anticipate seeing BAT's utility grow as it supports more creators and publishers in our digital advertising and services platform. Sounds like a great platform project. So this is what it's going to look like. Um, they're going to make it a user-friendly uh, platform so that you can uh, donate to your favorite creators. And um, I've had Uphold for Uphold.com for over a year now, and actually it might come in use now. So I'll show you that here. It's interesting that they decided to use Uphold dot com uphold.com does not have very many cryptocurrencies it has uh, fiat currencies that you can uphold and it also has a couple cryptocurrencies okay so here's uphold.com and it's what you're going to need if you want to use this brave payments method to either accept uh basic attention tokens or give basic attention tokens um, with this YouTube creator platform. So I have a Bitcoin card, an Ether card, a Litecoin card, Bitcoin Cash, and then basic attention token. The only other cryptocurrency on here is Voxels. And you can see they're all, uh, all the crypt, all the fiat currencies from around the world are here, even gold and silver. And then, like I said, these are the only cryptocurrencies. There's US dollar, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, BAT, and then Voxels. So there's only six cryptocurrencies on this platform, and it's been around for quite a while. And it's a very good platform. It's very secure, transparent. If you look at the, you know, if we look here, from dollar to Bitcoin in seconds and 28 other currencies too. Instant and low cost, transparent, global, innovative. Anyways, they show you, uh, they have audits that are done continuously. So there's continuous uh, data on this site as well about how much they're holding, how much uh, is available, how much is on reserve, things like that. So uh, it's not a bad site to use as well. And they probably knew that. That's why they chose it because it's secure so moving on we have one more piece of news that we want to share with you and then we'll go over the crypto market cap and one of the last stories here how to talk about cryptocurrency at the holiday dinner table by techcrunch.com there are many reasons but the primary one is that the crypto world loves to keep quiet and take profits on the sly the technology is mature enough that anyone can implement a blockchain solution from small fintechs to MasterCard, but not yet trusted enough to become a true store of general value. However, the recent SegWit2x failure essentially showed the world that rule, the rulers of 
the blockchain, namely the whales who have millions in crypto and the miners, want Bitcoin to avoid becoming a utility and act more as a commodity. This is fine. This has been practiced for decades on the NASDAQ with untrained traders making gut-based guesses on complex companies. But in crypto, the technology is wedded to the price and misunderstanding the news coming out of services like Coinbase can get you into a lot of trouble. To a degree, the crypto loyalists love the fact that their world is inscrutable. Tell them that there are a lot of smart people doing a lot of cool stuff that was impossible even a few years ago. So here's the full article here. You're sitting down to a nice meal and your aunt always one step ahead mentions she wants to start investing in Bitcoin. You freeze and drip of gravy plopping off the table. It's your time to shine. Well, this actually happened to me. I had two days ago a Christmas party with my family and my cousin, uh, he's a producer, he produces music. Um, last, actually I hadn't seen him in two years, but last time I saw him, we were talking about music and producing music. But that was right when I was getting into cryptocurrencies, actually a little bit before that, but I was keeping quiet because that's how I do it. I, uh, I try out these things that I believe in and I don't go shout them from the rooftop until I've tried them, uh, tested them and succeeded in them. And then um, I can go out and tell people and show real life proof in the form of my bank account uh, how I made the right choice. And so he asked me what I've been doing and I haven't mentioned cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and, and investing in that. And he showed me his phone and he has an app that he's been following Bitcoin, Ethereum and things like that. And he says he wants to get in. Typical... Um, person that's heard of Bitcoin but has not made the steps to get into it and one of my uh, other family members an older gentleman um, not too much older um, I guess was interested in doing this too and learning how to do the dark web and so he came over and he said wow you invested in Bitcoin and I said yeah and he said how much did you invest and how much did you make and I said I invested about a thousand dollars and I made uh, 20 times my money in, in a year. And he said, good for you. So now uh, my family uh, has different perceptions of me. They look at me um, as successful now. And that's what Bitcoin can do and cryptocurrencies can do. And that's why it's worth bringing it up at the dinner table because you're onto something here. You're onto something uh, revolutionary and that's gonna shape the future and, uh, you know, you don't want to have everybody else get on it and then you have known about it for years and never mentioned it or uh, done anything about it yourself. So invest in it and uh, whatever you feel like investing in and then share that after once you've succeeded with your family. So it's your time to shine. You got this. First, you know what the state of crypto is very, very good. This has been a banner year for cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, ro Bitcoin rose from 738 a year ago to 8,220 as of this year. If you invested 7,000 in Bitcoin in November 2016, you'd be rounding into six figures by now. The same can be said about Ethereum with a bump from $9 in 2016 to 315 in 2017. Check out these graphs. So the rest of the article is here. We have James Sunloop saying, welcome to Bitcoin, newcomers. Here's your frequently asked questions. Who should I trust? Nobody. When should I sell? Never. Is Bitcoin dying because blank? No. What have I gotten myself into? Nobody knows. How do I learn more? Well, his website. So you can also learn more by subscribing to our channel or even better, hitting that bell down below. We'll put these articles in the links below in the description if you're interested in reading more. But we're gonna check out the market capitalizations here. And uh, so Bitcoin is down a little bit for uh, Bitcoin dominance. 
market cap of $246 billion and $8 billion 24 hour volume. So we see that Bitcoin Cash has um, a little bit more of a uh, market cap now and we might see some volume and we see that it's starting to spike up there. So maybe there's some people that know something and know that Bitcoin Cash is going to go up again because people are moving their money back into Bitcoin Cash from Bitcoin. We have Ethereum or Ripple we have here at a nice price. Ethereum is going up and could spike here um, soon. It's one of the coins to keep your eye on and don't miss out on. Get some Ethereum now. Um, get some Dash now before it goes up to a thousand and then you regret it. Monero, get that one um, now if you are wanting to get it, as well as Lisk. Omisi Go, you got to get that one now if you're planning on buying it. Um, BitConnect, it's going to pass that $300 mark here, but we have a lot of controversy in BitConnect and drama right now. We have uh, Sunny Decree just abandon all of his, uh, his affiliates and his uh, team, and um, which is something very shocking to the community. And we have a lot of other people creating drama. We have people waiting for the, the debit credit card coming out, um, things like that. We have this story where they could seize uh, BitConnect's funds if they don't prove that they're still a legit running business um, in the UK, which they don't really run out of UK, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But BitConnect solves every problem they face, so I'm sure they'll solve this somehow. We see Vert coins going up, Pivx as well. Um, there's basic attention token we talked about today. That'll probably go up in uh, light of this news coming out. Byte ball bytes will be uh, a strong top token, I think, pretty soon. Zcoin is a strong token. And um, yeah, got a beautiful, beautiful top 100 coins here. And uh, for changes, we have top change power ledger. It keeps staying on this top top uh, change number one for top changes. Um, it's been there like five out of seven days a week. This is at the top for the past couple weeks. Raiden Network is uh, is up here a lot too. And uh, for top losses, we have eight shares, bit shares, Ash. Kin, Ethos, Status, EOS. Um, I think I bought a little bit of EOS or at least put a stop order in because this is impressing me, this EOS coin. So, um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to get into. I'm sure you have your favorite coins too as well. And uh, let us know in the description down below which coins you're holding, which coins you're watching going into the end of this year and into the next year. We'll see you next time. Peace.